I got another message. It has been happening almost the same time every night. I don't know how this is happening. He is not here. Danny is gone. Or at least I thought he was. I know he is gone in the physical sense at least. But unless this is some sort of cruel digital trolling, he may not be gone completely after all. The question I face now is if he is haunting me or maybe trying to warn me of something. It started almost a month ago. I was at work at the store just finishing up my shift. Another late night one. I was walking out the back to the parking lot just a little after midnight. When I received a strange text from a number I didn't recognize. The number didn't look familiar. But what caught my eye was my name on the text thread was referring to me as AJ's. I was surprised and a bit confused since I had never gone by AJ's. I thought harder for a moment and did recall that my old friend Danny had called me that a lot and I never corrected him since I called him Danny Boys and we both annoyed each other with the nicknames. I felt sad thinking about Danny since he passed away about 10 years ago in a car accident. I was a bit flustered seeing the message that was addressed with the nickname since no one else had ever called me that. I looked at the body of the message and it was a garble of special characters and spaces with only a single legible word in the jumble. Please. I was confused by the bizarre message and the reference to my old nickname, so I responded asking who it was and what the message was supposed to be asking for. There was no response. I tried to push it from my mind, but it was bothering me. No one else besides Danny had ever called me that. The entire event got me thinking about that day 10 years ago. Danny and I were 16 and he had just gotten his license and a car to boot. It was a decently used grey Toyota Camry that his parents got him. We certainly wouldn't complain. My parents were never able to afford even a used car for me. So we were both stoked that his parents were able to get him one. Which meant that we both had a newfound freedom. That freedom was never meant to be. Since the very next day when volunteering to go get some groceries from the store for his parents, his car was struck by a drunk driver. He was pronounced dead at the scene and I didn't find out until the day after when I couldn't get a hold of him and had tried to call his parents. I was devastated and felt even worse since our last encounter was a bad fight we had gotten into over something. I can't even remember what that stupid fight was about, but that led to us cancelling our plans to go to the movies that night. Instead, he had been at home with his parents and that had inadvertently led to him dying on the road alone. He had been my best friend and I was not there for him. I still felt guilty about it, like it was my fault and if I had just not been so crappy that day to him and we had not fought that, he would still be here. I felt doubly guilty that I had not even realized it was almost the 10 year anniversary of it happening. I continued on my way back home, deep in thought and regret, and the rest of that night was uneventful. The next evening was my day off. I was a bit wired, so I stayed up later than normal and was just getting ready to go to sleep. Then again, just after midnight again, I got a notification of another message. It was on the same thread as before. It still had a jumble of characters, but the word beware was the only recognizable thing on the message. I was shocked again by the strange message and once again asked who this really was and what did they want. Again, no response. 
I had two words that sounded like the beginning of a request from this weird source. Please and beware. Please beware. Please beware what? I thought. This was so weird, I tried to look the number up online but turned up nothing. I couldn't figure out who was contacting me or why. Or how they knew what Danny used to call me for that matter. I had a restless and uncomfortable night, dreaming of the past and the uncertain future again. The following day, I tried to do everything normally, but I kept thinking about the messages, and even though I was very tired, I forced myself to stay up till midnight, expecting another message. At 12.07am, I was almost convinced it had stopped but I got a longer message than the previous ones. It was still mostly garbled characters, but it had what looked like ones and zeros this time too. Like some sort of matrix, like binary code has come through as well. Danny was really good with computers, I thought to myself. He had wanted to get a job working in IT somewhere when we grew up. I shook myself out of my reminiscing, and look for any words. This time, it had two intelligible words. Die and sorry. This message chain was starting to freak me out. I don't know who thought it was funny sending me cryptic messages about death and to beware, but I was not laughing. I was still unable to find anything about that number, despite my efforts in trying to locate its source. On the next two nights right on time, I received more messages, more garbled characters, more binary it looked like it was getting larger in bigger blocks than before, and what looked like a date format. No words, but what looked like 01 slash 25, and on the next night it was 24. I was once again confused and bewildered by the messages. Was that January 25th? That was the day 10 years ago when Danny died. And 24 that must be this year, 2024. Who is really sending these? I thought with rising frenzy. The next two days were the same thing again. A couple words and some weird characters. Though less garble and more binary it looked like. It was a large block now with odd breaks in between. The words were I'm and you. I didn't know what this was. Was Danny really talking to me from beyond? Was he trying to contact me near the anniversary of his death? Was it a warning or a threat? I couldn't figure it out and I feared the next message as much as I anticipated it. Last night... Just after midnight, I received the most recent message. Contained therein was the same as before, but with almost no random characters, just large blocks of binary, and the words, Will, On, and my nickname, AJ's, one more time. It was not the message itself, but what I tried afterward that has left me shaken to the core, and left me pondering my own fate. What I tried this time was taking the large blocks of binary that left me perplexed before and combining them with breakpoints intact. I considered Danny and his affinity with computers and decided to put these into a binary text translator and as I sit here now trembling at the results, I shall share them with you the listener and maybe you can tell me if there's anything I can do before it is too late. What the characters in the message translate into this. AJ's, please beware. You will die on 01 slash 25 slash 2024. I'm sorry. If this is true, then I don't have much time. I don't know what to do. It is after midnight again, and I can't bear to see what message comes next. I turn my phone off and lie awake, my heart pounding in my chest. 
just as I am about to fall asleep, I hear a burst of static as my TV comes to life in my room. I see more binary and the beginnings of a message again. I rub my eyes and try and focus on the message when it disappears and leaves a blue crash screen. I sit up to get closer and turn off the TV when I fall back onto my bed in disbelief as the mutilated visage of Danny displays on my TV. I can't speak. I can't breathe. I just stare at my dead friend. He does not seem to be able to speak either. He looks at me, almost sorrowful. The image flickers between a slow motion car crash and a drama movie showing a grieving family at a funeral and then a weekly forecast. Finally, it comes back to Danny. He holds up a hand to the glass of the screen and I hear a faint static sound and the words being mouthed looked like Goodbye. I'm sorry. He vanishes and a second later the TV screen explodes. It's real. It's all real. What can I do? I'm sorry too, Danny. Sorry for everything.